Hello, welcome to my channel. Another bibliophile reads, my name is Greg, and this is Sunday, March 17th, 2024. And my week is going to get a little weird. This is the third annual Week of the Weird, an event created by Crystal at Fiber Artsy and Jason at Weird Reads. This is just an event that encourages people to read weird stories or weird books. There are four prompts for this week. Old Weird, read story or book written before 1960. New Weird, read a story or book written between 1960 and present. Read a weird story book written by a female author. Read a weird story book written by a LGBTQIA plus author. Now, I have already read a story, but I'm going to show you some of my possible selections. I'm going to show you some... Um, books that I'm going to be selecting these stories from. We've got, sorry for the glare, Rivals of Weird Tales. This is just a collection of short stories, most of them published before um, 1952 or somewhere around there. Foundations of Fear. This is edited by David G. Hartwell. This is a very well-rounded collection and it goes back to the 19th century and lots of different weird tales. I have Dark Forces, edited by Kirby McCulley. This is actually the, the first book where the Stephen King's novella, The Mist, was published in. And now I have some individual authors. We've got Books of Blood 3 by Clive Barker. We've got Dark Gods by T.E.D. Klein, a really great horror writer who um, sort of disappeared into the, the non-writing ether after the late 80s, early 90s, somewhere around there. And to round it off, I've got Thomas Ligotti, Noctuary. Okay, so those are where I'm gonna be drawing my stories from, but as I said, I have already read my first story. And um, that is from this book. And it was Imp of Satan by Hugh B. Cave, originally written in um, 1935. And it is the story of a man somewhere, I think it's New England or some, some, some state that's not hugely populated. And he has married a young woman rather hastily. And she has a very sick uncle that, um, He's a rich uncle who lives in an old, dilapidated house. And um, he's supposed to go live with his new wife until his her uncle passes away. But as they're getting married, he's hearing voices saying, do not marry, do not marry, those sort of things. And he's getting into the house. And um, again, he starts hearing voices. He discovers an old photo album where his young bride is standing next to a a rugged, handsome young man with a, with a little scar on his cheek. And he asks her about just, oh, that's just a, a, a past thing. And then things get the weirdest. Now, I won't tell you the story, but I like this story. Hugh B. Cave is a well-known horror author. He had a long career. I believe he was writing well into his 70s and 80s. And this book was um, written in 19, this story was written in 1935. My problem is that the writing itself is kind of cheesy at times. People break into cackles of evil laughter, and you get the, the skin-crawling effects when you see something. That sort of stuff. But, you know, the actual solution in this was um, kind of an interesting solution. Very weird and very horror-esque, but showing um, a little bit of... Um, bringing nature and what naturalistic view into horror. I kind of liked it. 
new weird stories published before or after 1960. Black Man with a Horn by T.E.D. Klein, originally published in 1980. A man in his middle to late 70s is flying home on Malaysian Airlines. And um, he has an unfortunate encounter with the, the woman next to him who loses her lunch in his lap. So he requests a new seat, and he's seated next to another man, late 50s, who looks a little bit draggled, and he's sleeping. But he eventually wakes up, and he has a conversation. The, the man in his um, late 50s um, was a missionary in Malaysia. Now, the narrator of this story, they said, is in his mid to late 70s. He used to be a famous horror writer, and he's rather proud of himself for that. And part of the story, he's addressing H.P. Lovecraft, sort of as his inner muse. Well, anyway, this old man, this not old man, this 50-something man, was a missionary, and he talks about um, encountering some rather unusual natives out in Malaysia and the tribes of people and um, hints at meeting a tribe that um, was mentioned in a story by H.P. Lovecraft. Well, anyway, he um, disembarks from the plane and he sort of gives this, this, this missionary uh, the name of his sister who's living in Miami because the narrator actually lives in New York. And his sister is sort of familiar, gets, gets to know this missionary, until one day he disappears, that missionary. And there's these odd references to a black man with a horn. It was originally discovered in the airport where the narrator was um, kind of watching this missionary from the corner of his eyes in, a, in one of the airport shops. The missionary was um, looking through some records and he got spooked by a um, photo on the cover of a Coltrane jazz album because it looked like a black man with a horn because that's who Coltrane was. And this black man with a horn is a recurring motif. There is this um, icon on some of uh, the clothing that was worn by these um, tribes out in Malaysia. And it escalates from there because um, another person has disappeared. And that's where that's where I'll leave it in the story. And this is um sort of this um ex um, horror writer's um detective story, tracking down what happened to this missionary. So it's kind of an occult detective story too. Now I think T. E. D. Klein is um one of the the best horror writers that we had from the early mid eighties. Um, and he just dropped off the map, unfortunately, for whatever reason. He stopped writing, even though, um, as far as I know, he's still alive and working in New York, or not working, living in New York City. It's too bad, because um, he could have been one of the all-time greats of horror writers. Maybe he still is, with only this one collection of short stories published in his novel, Ceremonies. Good story. Read a weird storybook written by a female author. From Dark Forces, edited by, edited by Kirby McCullough, I read Where the Stones Grow by Lisa Tuttle, published in 1980. Lisa Tuttle was in her late 20s uh, when she wrote this, so she was still a fairly young author. It is the story of a man named Pete. Uh, he's living out in Texas. Um, and um, he is asked to... Uh, take a, a trip to England for some training, but he refuses. And he refuses because when he was a young boy, his father was in England, and his father died under some very unusual circumstances. They were off the coast of England in a very small town, and some of the locals pointed up the, the, the three sisters. These are three standing stones, and it was... um near New Hollows, what, 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 one, of the, one of those um, Druidic holidays. I, I, I'm drawing a blank at the moment. Um, and all, all the town people say, don't go, to the, go, don't go see these stones. But the 
the father does go see the stones. And the boy sort of follows the father and he sees the stones moving and the stones kill his father for watching them. Because if you watch the stones move, the stones have to kill you. And that's sort of the setup. Um, and, you know, Pete um, never wants to go to England again, but he does buy a, a house out in Texas. And um, I'll leave it there. This is a very solid short story. Um, I don't think it is the best short story I'm going to read this week. Um, but Lisa Tuttle went on to uh, become a fairly well-known horror author. And I think this was one of her, her early stories, as I said. She was only like in her late 20s when she wrote this. Still pretty good. Read a story by an LGBTQIA plus author. I have chosen Clive Barker. I read The Inhuman Condition from the short story collection of the same name. This is a story about some um, British youth. They are not very nice young men. Carney is out with his mates one night, and his mates decide to beat up an old homeless man named Pope and see if they can rob him of anything of value. Well, they don't find much of value, and Carney really isn't interested in beating up the old man, but he does search through the pockets of his coat. Um, he finds a piece of string with three complicated knots. Unknown to his mates, Carney picks up this piece of string, uh, this piece of string with knots, because he's sort of fascinated. He knows he's not very good at math. He's not very good at English or other school subjects, but he's quite handy. He knows how to do things with his hands. And he figures that um, untying these complicated knots will keep him amused. And they do. For a while, and one night, two of his other mates get Carney to go in on a, a robbery scheme. The, the two mates are going to go to a house and, and do the robbery. And the house is next to a path. And he's supposed to sit by the path and uh, be a watch out. But what he's doing is he's working on these knots. And the knot comes undone. And then something is released after the knot is undone. So that's all I'll tell you of this story. It is um, a good Clive Barker story. I am fairly certain that I read this collection way back in the 80s. But reading this story, I, I had no idea really where the story was going. But it, it is typical Clive Barker. The only issue I really have with this story is, is somewhere in the middle, the point of view changes. Um, it changes away from Carney into another side character who does something. And it was just sort of a puzzling shift in point of view. I'm not, I'm not sure it was effective. Um, for the storyline, yeah, I could see that um, having this person do this one thing off stage helped, but I, I think it could have done a little bit better than changing the point of view. But either way, this was still a fantastic short story. Um, I really like Clive Barker's short stories, and um, I would highly recommend anyone to pick up this collection or any of other of Clive Barker's collection of short stories. Okay. That's the end of Week of the Weird. I really enjoyed my weird stories this week. I would say that my favorite was the Clive Barker, followed by the T.E.D. Klein, then the Hugh B. Cave, and following up the end with um, Lisa Tuttle and uh, Where the Stones Grow. Well, anyway, I hope people will be inspired to join the Week of the Weird in 2025, and I do hope that our hosts, Crystal at Fiber Artsy and Jason at Jason's Weird Reads, do continue this tradition, because I will join again. Thank you all for watching, and keep on reading Weird. <laughs>